In today's episode of the vlog, we're talking about the ultimate battle for Scottish movie icon status between Braveheart and Outlaw King. That's coming right up. You fight! Hello everybody and how are you doing? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sean and I am a vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. And in today's episode, I'm talking about the brand new film on Netflix, Outlaw King, and how it compares to Braveheart. Yep, as much as we don't necessarily like to admit it, the 1995 film starring and directed by Mel Gibson as William Wallace, Scotland's national hero in Braveheart, is something that we're all a bit funny about talking, but at the same time, we all secretly love. It is a true icon, it won Oscars, it got all kinds of awards around the world, it made all kinds of money, it's been a global phenomenon. And over the last few years, with this rise of streaming services like Netflix, they thought, you know what, we can have some of that pie as well. So they've brought out Outlaw King, which is kind of a sequel, but also not really. I will explain more about that in just a wee minute. But first of all, guys, I just want to say welcome and thank you very much to everybody for watching. If you're new here, do not forget to hit that red subscribe button down in the bottom corner so that you can keep in touch with all of my videos from now on. Join the clan and don't forget also to hit that notification bell so that YouTube will show you my videos from now on. Right, okay, the big battle I think we've all been waiting for, really. This has been building up since 1995. Braveheart against Outlaw King. Outlaw King, by the way, it is released on Friday the 9th of November 2018. That is tomorrow if you're watching this vlog the day that it comes out. I'm so excited for all of you guys to get to see it and let me know what you think. I'm gonna tell you more about my thoughts in just a wee second, but I have seen it, I've had an early press review. Braveheart obviously starring superstar, global superstar Mel Gibson as William Wallace Braveheart which was a big, big character of the time and needed to be portrayed correctly. And I don't think he was in a lot of ways, but it was a good entertaining film nonetheless, which told the story of the English suppression of Scotland. And I think it was the first time that was done in a way that kind of engaged an audience. A really big film, but it got a lot of things wrong. And I think from the outset, Outlaw King, which is directed by David McKenzie, a Scot, I think they definitely tried to put that right. The guys at Outlaw King thought, right, we're not gonna fall into the same traps because a lot of people have criticized Braveheart for years for making a number of really important mistakes in the name of creative filmmaking. David McKenzie has set out to make a film that stuck to the facts, but was also entertaining, showed amazing battle scenes, and gave depth to character and storyline. So I thought I would do this video to put them head to head and discuss a couple of the differences. And guys, this is the first video in a series I'm doing on my channel, which is gonna run continuously on Thursday evenings called The Sean Show, in which I discuss pop culture and current events around the world and giving you a Scottish lens and perspective on everything that's going on in the world. And this is the first episode of The Sean Show, so welcome and thank you very much for joining in. Right, let's get to it. Outlaw King against Braveheart. I think the first thing we need to say in terms of historical differences, and one of the really, really important facts here was the portrayal of Robert the Bruce in Braveheart. He was played by Angus McFadden, who was made in Braveheart to look like a really conniving and devious individual, a coward, and also traded in William Wallace's life in return for good favour with the King of England. <laughs> Yes, in Braveheart, Robert the Bruce betrayed William Wallace, and that is the reason William Wallace got captured and handed over to the English, and he was eventually executed. It gave a really, really bad impression of who Robert the Bruce was, and I think it was a massive injustice to the man himself. And the thing is, most people are not gonna look into the history and look at actually what happened in the story. So, having watched the movie, they're gonna think, well, this Robert the Bruce guy, he was a bit of an arse, wasn't he? And he ended up being King of Scotland. So I think it was only about right that Outlaw King came along and gave a proper fair portrayal to the man himself, Robert the Bruce, the great king of Scotland. There were quite a lot of nerves, mind you, when it was announced that Chris Pine, the American actor best known for Star Trek, was announced to be the man who was gonna be Robert the Bruce. That's better! Just another day in the fleet. Desperate for justice. Everybody thought, well, Braveheart made that mistake of casting an American and Mel Gibson to play William Wallace. A lot of people criticized Mel Gibson in his role of William Wallace, by the way, so had they made the same mistake again. But I can tell you, having watched the movie, that I don't think, if there is any failing of this movie, I don't think that is it. Chris Pine was absolutely excellent in many ways. He did a really, really good job of portraying Robert the Bruce. But anyway, this is the first point of this video that I'm making, is that Outlaw King gives a fair crack of the whip to Robert the Bruce. Finally, a movie that gives the man a good portrayal 
and a fair portrayal. And of course, William Wallace does actually appear in Outlaw King, but it is a cameo. You will see William Wallace's limb, I think it's his arm or maybe his leg, but anyway, it is hung up high for all the population of the town of Berwick to see. So that is the only part of Outlaw King where you get to see William Wallace in this Outlaw King film. The second point I wanna make, right, and this is vital, especially when it comes to getting people on board that this is an authentic film about Scotland and made in Scotland, right? Outlaw King, you can clearly tell and everybody in Scotland can clearly tell that they filmed it all in Scotland. Any Scottish person, and even people who have visited Scotland, will be able to recognise four, five, or six different filming locations when they watch Outlaw King. They're all very obvious in the film. And actually, I was in Scotland when they filmed it, and I hung around the film sets. One of them was just 500 metres away from where I live at Craig Miller Castle. It was great to see Scotland on screen in Outlaw King. It looked rusty, it looked dirty, but it was like real authentic Scotland as we know it. The castles were beautiful, the hillsides were beautiful, you saw the heathers and the moors and stuff. It was just clearly Scotland that they filmed it in. It was so identifiable. That was amazing to see. Outlaw King got that so right, and Braveheart got that part so wrong because they used no identifying features that were in Scotland. I don't think they filmed any of it in Scotland. And guys, listen, I'm gonna be doing another video, a vlogumentary over the next couple of days, giving you a thorough tour of the filming locations of Outlaw King. The ones that I know about, the ones that you can visit, the ones that I can take you to, I'm gonna do that vlogumentary showing you those locations. Okay, point number three, and this is big. If you're into your history, it's really big. Although I will admit, a lot of people in Scotland don't necessarily understand the significance of this. I certainly didn't, it's something that I've learned quite recently, but the use of the kilt and Highland dress in Braveheart was totally and utterly wrong. First of all, just because of the fact that it was full Highland wear, it was a whole big long kilt that goes up around your neck and around your body, wraps around, and it becomes a kilt in the way the Highlanders would have used it. The first reason that that is wrong is because William Wallace was a lowlander. He was not from the Highlands and he would not have been wearing Highland dress. But even more important than that, is the time period. The 1300s, the kilt basically did not exist. The kilt did not become a popular item of dress in Scotland until the 16th and 1700s. In fact, the first ever record of someone drawing people wearing a kilt was in the 1500s. That was like 300 years after the time portrayed in Braveheart. Meanwhile, in Outlaw King, David Mackenzie known that this was a big important historical part of the film that he needed to get right. The dress was absolutely spot on. They were wearing dress the people of that time in Scotland, especially noblemen in the lowlands of Scotland, the dress that they would have worn as warriors. And further to that point, you'll notice in Braveheart the use of blue face paint throughout the film. Blue face paint was actually something used by the Picts that lived in Scotland many, many, many hundreds thousands of years before the time of Braveheart. The Picts were the people that scared the Romans into not coming into Scotland. The Romans wrote about the blue-faced demons who were mostly naked and charged at them through the fields and terrified them. And that is why they built Hadrian's Wall at the border of England and Scotland and said, right, you can keep Scotland, Picts, we're not coming in, you blue-faced nutcases. The Picts had blue faces, but in the time of Braveheart and all that kind of stuff, they just didn't. And to be honest with you, most people in modern Scotland don't really pay that close attention to these types of things and don't necessarily know that history. I certainly didn't know the kilt was not something that the people of the Braveheart time would have worn until very recently. And I guess most people of my generation wouldn't know either. But nonetheless, it is important that Outlaw King, in the vein of getting things right, did not go down that route. Point number four. In Braveheart, William Wallace was made out to look like he was born and raised in poverty. A very humble man. In actual fact, this was really, really, really wrong. William Wallace was a nobleman. He and his family would have been the people that collected the rents from the poor farmers. And Outlaw King, they get this absolutely right because Robert the Bruce was portrayed as a rich nobleman. That is who he was in real life. And he would have been the person collecting all the rents of the poor farmers. Again, this is just one of the many liberties that Braveheart took to try and tell a story. All right, number five. This is something that a lot of people are gonna thoroughly enjoy in Outlaw King is the battle scenes. The battle scenes are absolutely epic. Braveheart, the battle scenes were amazing as well. But listen, let's just talk about the accuracy of the battle scenes. Braveheart, they portrayed the Battle of Stirling Bridge, right? And the significant part about that battle scene in Braveheart is the fact that there was no bridge. They didn't even try to follow the storyline of what actually happened in that battle. In Outlaw King, the main battle, they portrayed the Battle of Loudon Hill. In that battle scene in Outlaw King, they did get a lot of things wrong in it, mainly in the number of people who died, for example, but they did actually try to follow the storyline 
of what actually happened in that battle. Anyway, let me just say right now, you guys are going to absolutely love the battle scenes in Outlaw King. If you're into that type of stuff, you will absolutely think, wow, this is mind blowing. As a filmmaker, I just appreciate it no end. All right, I want to talk about the loyalties of our main characters, William Wallace, Robert the Bruce. In Braveheart, it was made out to look pretty black and white. When actual fact, they were quite complex. The relationship between these noblemen of Scotland, William Wallace and Robert the Bruce in particular, and the people on the other side, the English kings. The battles of Scottish independence were as much about the rich nobles of Scotland keeping hold of their land rights as anything else. In Braveheart, it made it to seem like a pure Scottish nationalistic play, when I think that is just simplifying things a little bit. Of course, these noblemen would have been concerned about injustices in their lands and rape and pillage and all that kind of stuff, but they would have absolutely been preoccupied with the fact that their lands were going to get taken off them. So, in Outlaw King, for example, we see that Robert the Bruce actually is loyal to the king at some points throughout the film. He pledges his fealty to Edward Longshank and then decides to change his mind. It's a complex relationship and it's something that plays out pretty well in Outlaw King that I think did not exist properly in Braveheart. Okay, point number seven, I want to talk about the close personal relationships of the main characters. In Braveheart, it was totally fanciful between the woman in his life. The thing is, William Wallace's close personal relationships and wives and romantic relationships, we didn't actually know much about in history. There's not that many records. So they did have creative license to do what they pleased with it, but their version of history was really fanciful in the fact that he had romantic dealings with the Prince of Wales' wife, for example. Uh, I just think that's probably quite absurd to even think about that notion. But again, it played into the story pretty well. It was a is a bit of romance into that. Outlaw King stuck exactly to the history in the main characters that they put in that. Elizabeth de Burra, played by the amazing Florence Pugh, by the way, incredible actress, which was his wife and Marjorie, his daughter from his first marriage. Those two characters were absolutely real. Those were exactly the people that he had close relationships with. Outlaw King stuck exactly right to that storyline. Okay, I wanna talk about Edward the First, King Edward the First, Edward Longshanks, the hammer of the Scots, a bad, bad man in history if you're Scottish. The trouble with Scotland is that it's full of Scots. He was a man that executed William Wallace. He was just a horrible man, right? Portrayed by Patrick McGugan in Braveheart and Stephen Delaney in Outlaw King. It's kind of difficult to judge like which one did it better because they were both really, really good, both evil in different ways. But I think um, definitely the Outlaw King portrayal, Stephen Delaney, Stannis Baratheon in Game of Thrones, I think it was a more true to life character. They were both very different in their portrayal of the character, which makes it difficult to actually say which one did it better or which one was more accurate. But anyway, listen, a couple of things that Braveheart got wrong. For example, they said he died on his deathbed very close to and at exactly the same time as when William Wallace was executed. We know that that is definitely not true because he died years after William Wallace was executed. His actual death was on his route up to Scotland as he was going back to try and take on Robert the Bruce again in another battle. He died just a couple of miles from the Scottish border as they were heading up north, which is something the Outlaw King portrays exactly as it happened. Two very good portrayals of King Edward I. Very, very different portrayals, and it's difficult to judge them apart. But listen, then we get on to King Edward I's son, the Prince of Wales, who became King Edward II. This gets even more interesting because those two characters in both films were portrayed very, very differently from each other. In Outlaw King, he was portrayed by Billy Hill, and he was a bloodthirsty, demonic character, evil and desperate to prove to his father that he could be the king that slayed Robert the Bruce. And this actually followed the story pretty accurately because we know that he was knighted by his father, and he personally accompanied his father into Scotland several times in his attempts to put down the Scottish uprisings. After his father's death, he eventually returned to England, a failure in his campaigns in Scotland, something that hung over his head for years to come, and he was eventually killed by his own men. And he is the number one baddie in this film. He's got this really peculiar and very distinctive haircut in the film that just makes him look like an asshole. You know he's gonna cause trouble from the haircut alone. And if you look at Braveheart, that portrayal was so, so different. Peter Hanley got the spot in Braveheart. He was made out to be an extremely weak figure. <laughs> not fit to be king. In Braveheart, they also told the story of his relationship with another man, which at the time would have been very much a big talking point. That is actually accurate, that really happened in history, but the fact of him being a really weak figure is probably inaccurate. He wouldn't have been weak in the way that they portrayed in Braveheart. He would have been ineffective and useless as a king, and that is why he was eventually murdered. But again, very, very different portrayals, and it would be interesting to know what you guys think of the differences in that. Okay, let's just talk for a second about the accents. We need to talk about the accents because it's such a vital part of the story and the criticism that Braveheart received initially. 
Outlocking does a much better job across the board of the accents than Braveheart ever did. Chris Pine uses a very soft, Scottish accent, a bit like we have in Edinburgh, and he pulls it off very, very well. It's a good attempt at the accent, and the fact is, he doesn't actually have that much dialogue in the film. Maybe that is deliberate, but I don't think people are going to have that much to complain about. And the fact is, most of the cast of Outlaw King were actually Scottish anyway, so they did the accent right. But if we're looking at history, the actual fact is, Robert the Bruce and these types of characters would have been speaking Norman French, firstly, and they would have also spoke Gaelic. They would have spoke English very much as a third language and not that often. So it's kind of irrelevant anyway. The last point I want to make is about the people surrounding these characters, William Wallace and also Robert the Bruce. I think in Braveheart and William Wallace, they deliberately did not have any massive big characters that were real life people around William Wallace. When actual fact, that was really inaccurate. He had a lot of support from very, very powerful people who were big, important parts of the story who they just erased and didn't put in. They basically made up characters in history that didn't exist. Outlaw King has been very, very different, let me tell you. They added characters that really, really existed and were a big part of the story. Black Douglas, for example, a massive, massive character in that story. And guys, listen, the portrayal by Aaron Taylor Johnson was amazing. I serve Robert Bruce! I think for me that was absolutely my favourite performance of this film. Aaron Taylor Johnson as Black Douglas was an absolute demon on the battlefield. As I said in my review, his screams were something to behold and will stick with you for a very long time. But then we also had Angus MacDonald, the Lord of the Isles, and again another real life character that existed. So I think to conclude, like we can see that Outlaw King has tried to stick very close to the real life storyline, the real life characters and the real life people, where Braveheart took artistic license with the story and went in its own direction. Braveheart was all full of green grass and green trees and was all romantic and all that kind of stuff, whereas Outlaw King was like dirty and brown and like realistic. And I think it gave a more honest portrayal of the characters of the times and the battles. The characters were a lot more complex and had a lot more depth in Outlaw King, absolutely. Nonetheless though, Braveheart was a global juggernaut, a massive success in the film awards. It made so much money over the years, and whether Outlaw King will ever get to those heights, we don't know. So which one is actually better? Well, I don't know, it's difficult to say. I really, really like Outlaw King. It is a great film, Scottish film location, Scottish actors, a Scottish cast, a Scottish director, it looks phenomenal. But on the other hand, for all the criticism that we Scots give Braveheart, we all secretly love it. But we've all watched it about a dozen times each. We might even shed a tear when we watch it. This is not stuff that we admit to, but it is a great film. I think what it does is it really, really gets home the point about the injustices that Scotland has faced at the hands of the English over the years, over the centuries, that led to Scottish independence back in those days. Yes, it was totally inaccurate. The characters weren't all real. Robert the Bruce got a really unfair crack at the whip. But we loved that film. It was a great film. Outlaw King, I think people are going to love it as well, but in a different way. And to be honest, if I'm thinking global success, I don't think, I just can't see Outlaw King getting the same level of global success that Braveheart got to. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is Netflix time to shine, but I don't think it will. And also guys, looking at the early reviews of Outlaw King, it's not been that great in terms of the critics so far. It's had a 57% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That is a six out of 10. That is out of about 50 reviews so far, which is like, it is not that good. But nonetheless, it has got a lot of attention. A lot of people want to see it. And it's out on Netflix tomorrow. So you guys will be watching it over the next few days and over the weekend. And I'd be delighted to know your opinions. What did you think about the film? And especially if you watched Braveheart before as well, I want to know what you thought down below in terms of Outlaw King versus Braveheart. I'm from Scotland, this is my Scottish perspective, this is my Scottish opinion, but I wanna know everybody's opinion down below in the comments. I can't split them apart, I like them both for very different reasons, but purely for the fact that Outlaw King was filmed in Scotland at locations that I can recognize, tips the edge for me, absolutely. It was a big mistake, I think, Braveheart not using filming locations in Scotland, and Outlaw King has done fantastic at those locations. It makes them look out of this world good. That alone tips the edge for me in favor of Outlaw King. But that was it guys. Go and check out my full review on my channel. The link is up above right now. You'll get to see my initial thoughts on the film and compare that to what you guys think as well. I'd love to know your thoughts. And that was basically the first episode of The Sean Show. A regular show I'm gonna do every single Thursday talking about these types of things. I would really appreciate guys if you would share this video with your friends and family, anybody who might be considering watching this film. As I said, I will be doing a film location tour video very, very soon. But until then, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.